Uh, hey everyone, in today's ep- <coughs> Excuse me. In today's episode, I pay tribute to the best movie of my childhood. How'd you do this? I'll show you. When Jurassic Park came out in 1993, I was a 10 year old child with a well developed dinosaur addiction. At that point, I had a lot of dinos, dragons, and my collection grew with some Jurassic Park toys. I also had this guy who clearly dealt a bad hand in life. Every moment I live is agony. I also made countless dinos from plasticine. As you can see, after so many years, only the medium changed. And I still have some dinos around me. On this ruler, on this mug, this little fella among our tea collection, on this t-shirt that my wife sued for me, on this pillow that my wife bought for me, and the wife. Well, little Timmy, let me show you something. <laughs> when I finished the big bird, I modeled the three characters and the Jeep Wrangler. Or should I say, weep, because the J is a modified U as far as I know. Enough digital modeling, let's jump into the physical world. I needed different trees, bushes, weeds, and shrubberies. Is there anywhere in this town where we could buy a shrubbery? Anyone in their right mind would have both scenic trees, or at least sea foam. But I was like, that's not what I'm gonna do. I have snipped, shaved, drilled, and glued back again and again some tweaks until I ended up with this Frankenstein's monster of a tree. After that I applied the shaggy bits that can hold the flocking. I had a lot of fun trying to keep in place the small, most brittle things in the universe while the CA glue has set. Five, four, three, two, one. God damn it! I used baking soda dissolved in water to activate the glue. That was the only thing that kept me from falling into the abyss of madness. Do you know what is common in CA glue and kids? Messy, they're expensive, they smell. I brushed a mix of brown paint, PVA glue and plaster of Paris on the tree trunk and the branches to hide the joints. After that, I painted the trees to a light, desaturated brown and applied a dark brown wash. I made a delicious mix of sawdust and diluted green paint. When the flocking properly dried out, I used spray adhesive to glue it to the tree. I also used a little foam flocking to bulk up the foliage. After the basic green layer, I sprinkled different tea leaves to the respective trees for a little color variation, then applied the original green sawdust flocking again. Unfortunately, these stuck on the branches too, so I tried to remove the most of them with an old brush. I hate trees. I finished the trees by airbrushing a little light green on the tops as highlights. Then I have cut the base and the back of the diorama on my band saw and drilled the holes that will hold the trees and the T-Rex. It's a dinosaur. Painting the background was something I haven't been very comfortable with. I almost never paint on canvas. This old hammer orc is the best painting I have done so far, so you can imagine how bad is the rest. I brushed, stippled and repainted a few times and the results are... I started the miniature painting with the Zenital Prime, which really popped the details. Then I painted Rexy Brown and dry brushed it with a lighter brown. As you can see, I didn't follow the original paint scheme in every detail. Mine is a bit darker and doesn't have stripes on its back. After dry brushing, I wet blended yellow and different shades of brown, so the skin had more realistic color variations. I could have used the brush all along, but you know. There's fun in that. It looks much more like skin to me than before. Then I painted all the dreadful teeth and those cold, murderous eyes. I almost forgot to paint the tongue. 
All that were left were a little wash and dry brush. At least I thought, because later it hit me that the underside should be brighter than the rest of the body. So I airbrushed light brown to her belly. Painting the humans were as easy as it gets. They were mostly yellow, except for Malcolm who is black, with a little tan. The only tricky thing was to paint the clothes under the raincoat. Let me seize the opportunity of this little silence and ask you to give this video a like and leave a comment. You also should subscribe if you like silly videos about building dioramas. This would really help me make more of this stuff. I applied a little wash on the faces, but they turned out too dark and splotchy, so I painted some highlights on them. And made Malcolm's chest shine in its full glory. With the Jeep, my painting plan was to apply the base beige color, then airbrush on the red parts, put on the stickers that my father printed on his professional laser printer, airbrush everything with silk gloss varnish, and quickly paint the inside. On the contrary, it went like this. I removed the painter's tape, and immediately after I recovered from the nervous breakdown, I fixed the base color that was teared down and overpainted where the red bled under the mask. Then put on the stickers, but I have designed the side numbers way too big, so I had to freehand them. Which went surprisingly well. Splendid. After that I picked out the Jeep logo with a metallic marker, varnished the whole thing and painted the different accessories and the interior. I had to make the tail lights from green stuff, because somehow I forgot to print them. Sometimes I wonder how many years it takes to master CA glue. Not too mean. I glued on the different parts of the Jeep that I printed separately, because it was easier to paint them this way, and cut a piece of transparent plastic for the windshield. Then I wanted to put the minis into their places, but Robert Muldoon didn't fit, because during modeling I haven't thought about the space for assembly. Item 151 on today's glitch list. I solved the problem by cutting Robert in half. This way I could manage to put the legs inside without the head being stuck in the dashboard. I have put the boxes to their places and set Malcolm in the middle. It was a cheap shot. After that I glued the wheels and windscreen wipers on. Relax. Try and enjoy yourself. Yahoo! <laughs> I applied the wash to the whole car and painted the lower lights that I also almost forgot. I broke off the mirrors multiple times and even lost one of them, so I had to cut one from foamed PVC. For a short period of time, gluing this mirror seemed impossible. <laughs> you crazy son of a bitch, you did. Only one thing left. Glue the license plates to their respective holders. I drilled some holes into the base of the diorama with my Dremel tool and made the layout for the bushes, ferns and you know for the... Sh sh shrubbery! For the muddy ground cover I mixed sienna paint, PVA glue and tie grout and smashed it on the base, leaving out the holes for the plants. I made trails for the wheels and the deeper part for the puddle that the jeep just driving through. I also put some mud on the car, so it looks more like something that's speeding on a muddy road. Where it was too thick I wiped off the excess. For a slight color and texture variation, I threw a little of a darker and a lighter dirt on the base. Then I painted the decayed log with brown and black washes to look rotten enough. <coughs> it's happening again. <coughs> I also stippled some goopy paint on it with a paper towel and then... <coughs> Sorry for that. And then I massaged everything into the fibers. I used watered down PVA glue with a little alcohol in it to fix the dirt then put the plants into their holes. 
By the way, most of these are simple plastic plant parts that I washed in soapy water and airbrushed with colors that would fit the jungle better. The others were harvested from my grandfather's garden. I sprinkled pelleted rabbit food crumbs everywhere except the road. I sprayed everything with burnt umber wash and applied the diluted glue again. I put Rexy to its final place and blended it in with a little more texture paste and dirt. The ground still seemed boring, so I placed some rocks, branches and grinded tea leaves here and there and gave them the usual dark wash treatment. Splendid! Um. After the trees took their places, I airbrushed everything with glossy varnish. But it wasn't shiny enough for a dirt road after a huge storm, so later I brushed on more of it. Using UV resin I made some puddles and glued the car on the base. Also with the UV resin, cleaned them from the cotton wool and stuck them next to the car's wheel. I felt like this is a static display of an exceptionally dynamic movie scene and this water splash maybe gives some dynamism back to the diorama by hinting movement. As finishing touches, I applied glossy varnish on the wheels and on the underside of the car. Hold on to your butts. Must go faster. There were moments when I thought this will be a disastrous project. Some parts didn't fit, some were not overly accurate, but in the end everything came together nicely. At least I like it. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this diorama. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Cheers!